Welcome to your tutor online video lessons. Today I'm going to teach you how to handle zero and negative exponents. Uh, first I'll start off with a couple of examples. Uh, zero exponents are incredibly easy because the answer is always one. One to the zero power is one. Two to the zero power is one. Twenty-three to the zero power is one. Do you get the hang of it yet? 431 to the zero power is 1 and 24.217 to the 0 power is 1. In fact, um, anything to the 0 power is always 1. Uh, you're going to want to look out for a couple of uh, tricks for the 0 power. Uh, because just because you see a zero power doesn't mean it's automatically one. Just the number that is being raised to the zero power becomes one. So in this example here, three to the zero power uh, will become one. Forty-two to the zero power will become one. Uh, but everything else stays the same, and you're just going to have to um, mind your order of operations. So one plus seven uh, becomes eight and 12 times 1 is 12 and of course that simplifies uh, 2 thirds. Um, so again just make sure that when you're simplifying to uh, the zero powers just make sure you only apply it to the actual zero power uh, of the term that is happening to it. Uh, now I'll show you how to handle negative exponents. Uh, they are pretty easy, and uh, the best way to show you is just with a simple, simple example, x to the negative 1. All negative exponents do is send something uh, that's in the numerator to the denominator. So the way we do that in this example is there's a 1 on top of the fraction, and then on the bottom, the x goes to the bottom. So another way to think of this is uh, it, it'll just um, turn something into a fraction and put it on the bottom. One thing to look out for is if uh, the negative is something other than 1, it's still going to go in the bottom, um, and it's still going to be the same exponent, but now that negative disappears, because all the negative does is put it in the opposite side uh, of the fraction. Uh, another way to look at this, let's look at something that's already in the bottom fraction. So let's say uh, 1 over a to the negative 2 power. Since it's negative, it's going to move this up to the numerator, so it will become a squared. Again, the negative sign goes away because what the negative did, its job, was just to move it to the top. And since it's moved to the top, uh, the negative is already applied. We don't need to write over 1 uh, because uh, there's nothing in, in the denominator. I just want to show you one example of um, a common problem you'll normally see with uh, these negative exponents. Um, normally you see a fraction with a whole bunch of different uh, variables and the negative exponents and the question will tell you um, rewrite this problem in such a way that there are no negative exponents. So all you gotta go do is go left to right um, and anywhere there's a negative exponent move it uh, to the opposite side of the fraction. So that x to the negative 3 will go to the bottom z to the negative 1 will go to the bottom, the y to the negative 2 will go to the top. So we're left with, uh, go ahead and write the fraction bar here. I see a y stays up top. Uh, well, it will move uh, x3 to the bottom. There's already an x2. I'll deal with that in just a second. And they're going to be multiplied together. x now positive 3. Remember, the negative did its job already by moving it to the bottom y will stay up top, z comes down, so we just add our z in there. Now it's a positive one, which doesn't need to be written, uh, and that takes care of the top. The bottom, that x squared stays in the bottom because it's positive. A positive exponent means there's no moving. y to the negative 2 will move to the top, so we're just going to put that up here positive 2 now because the negative sign did its job to move it to the top. a to the fourth is positive so it just stays put. Uh, one more step to simplify. When we're multiplying 
variables with exponents. Remember the exponents get added together. So we got y to the third up top. And on the bottom, uh, 2 and 3 give us 5. Z is on the bottom. And a to the fourth. Uh, just two more cases I wanted to show you how to deal with here with negative exponents. Uh, first is when the negative exponent is on the outside as a parenthesis. The way you're going to have to deal with this is the negative is applied to every term inside the parenthesis. Uh, in this case, the coefficient uh, and the variable. Uh, so two, uh, we're just going to uh, go ahead and put the whole thing underneath of a uh, one. We're going to put it in the denominator. Uh, two squared is four. Um, x, uh, and when we are um, raising one exponent to another exponent, we multiply them. Um, so 2 times 3 is 6. And since it was negative 2 before, uh, we just put that right into uh, the bottom in the denominator. Um, and that's how you deal with that one. Um, another is when you're raising a fraction uh, to a negative exponent. This one's done similarly too. Uh, the way you can do it is go ahead and flip that fraction. So since y was on the bottom, uh, x was on the top, we're going to move y to the top uh, over x squared. And now it's just uh, all that raised to the third power. And uh, you may know how to do this one already. You just apply it to both the numerator and denominator, uh, y cubed. Um, and then the bottom, uh, the 2 and the 3 multiplied together, an exponent raised to an exponent uh, is 6. All right, I hope that was helpful for you. I hope you learned something. Um, this lesson uh, happened because uh, somebody asked for it. Uh, they went over to the website, they sent me an email, said, hey, I don't know uh, about zero and negative exponents. Can you make a video about it? So I did. Um, you can do the same thing. Head over to the website, yourtutoronline.com. Uh, click the contact uh, button up top. Shoot me an email with your question. Uh, leave a comment here on uh, this video or on my YouTube page. Uh, ask your questions. Uh, if I didn't uh, explain things well enough in this video, something I left out, uh, let me know. I'll make a follow-up one, um, and I'm always looking for ideas for other lessons. Uh, so I hope uh, this was helpful for you. Uh, if you need extra help, one-on-one -on -one kind of tutoring, I'll offer that too. Uh, same way, head over to the website, shoot me an email, and uh, we might be able to set something up for you. Uh, good luck uh, to you this week, and uh, see you next time.